You are listening to the Getting Lucky Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. I am your host, Lucky Robert Curtis. We are here to talk about the amazing, the transcendent, the magnificent UFC 156. To help me break the show down, I'm welcoming back Mitchell. Should should be a, a fun time discussing this. For the love of Christ, Mitchell, I'm going to need you to amp it up. Listen, I'm pretty excited. We got Frankie Edgar going against Josie. Josie the loser, Aldo. He's definitely losing. We'll talk about that. I'm excited. You're excited. You're Australian. Let's go. Your excitement is like a shot of adrenaline straight into my heart. <laughs> yes! <laughs> We have uh, a huge show, <clears throat> and one thing that I, w- I noticed as I started taking notes for this show is that these are the prelims that I was wanting. Like the Fox card we just covered, everyone had losing, re- you know, uh, was on a losing streak except for like three dudes, and one of those dudes had never fought in the UFC. Mm-hmm. This show, dudes are coming off of nine fight win streaks, four fight win streaks, and that's just in the Facebook prelims. This is going to be a show to rival UFC 100. Mark it down. <laughs> mark it, dude. Did you mark it? I marked it. It's marked. Let's talk about the Facebook prelims. There are two fights. They're both bantamweights. The first one is Edwin Figueroa, 9-1, and one, coming off of a two-fight winning streak, versus Francesco Bernoulli. Just kidding. That's a guy from Cars 2. <laughs> uh, Francesco Rivera, 8. We have kids. Sorry, I got kids, man. <laughs> we have kids. Yeah, we, I, have a, I have kids. Um, he's 8-2. and two, He's got one no contest, and he's coming off of a draw. What do you think about this fight? I want Figueroa. This is what I want. Uh, You have a guy in Francisco Rivera who's coming off of a fight where he did win by knockout, but it was overturned because he had a banned substance. Yes. What I would like to see is um, Rivera amp. I want him to juice up even more. I'm talking about I want him to to take whatever Alistair Overeem, who's also fighting on this card, whatever he's taking, I want him to take four of them. And then I want him to kick Figueroa squarely in the nuts, repeatedly, yes. until, it's, until it's a draw, or, or, or no contest, because Figueroa is the guy who beat Caceres because of bull, bull penalties. Caceres was penalized two points for kicks that uh, Figueroa just milked and milked and milked, so I want to see him get his and get kicked in the nuts even more. Yes, this, if, if this were a Western, both Figueroa and Rivera would be wearing black hats. Mm-hmm. Although, to Rivera's defense, the, the substance that he was popped for uh, was an over-the-counter stimulant. Right. I hope he stimulates his foot into Figueroa's vagina With hole. his That's meaty what I hope. steroided calf muscle. Mm-hmm. Who are you picking for the fight? Uh, I'm picking Rivera. I think so. Rivera, if you if you look at his results without the stimulant, which probably had no effect, he, he KO'd Roland Delorme, and then with that, that'd be a four-fight win streak, whereas Edwin Figueroa really should have lost to Caceres, uh, and that would you know, make him one out of two for his last three fights. I'm also going to go with Francesco Bernoulli. <laughs> the next fight, I have to admit, I am emotionally conflicted. Chico Camus... Camus, 12 and 3 on a four fight winning streak versus Dustin Kimura, 9 and 0. I understand where you're conflicted. My nickname in my fraternity was Chico. Don't ask why. Is that right? Yes, it is. My nickname in high school was Kimura. That's crazy. We should fight. <laughs> uh, so, do I go with the emotional pick, Ch- Chico, or do I go with the guy that's got the greatest last name in all of mixed martial arts? I'm I solely because of uh, his name is going with Kimura. Mm. I might have to go with Dustin Kimura, although I it would settle it if we ever ran across a fighter whose name was Roger Rear Naked Choke. That would be the greatest. <laughs> that would be another level above this one. Um, I, this is Dustin Kimura's UFC debut. Does that change your opinion? Um, it doesn't change my opinion as much as the fact um, uh, of Chico's last couple fights. It, they've all been decisions, which tells you that he can go the distance. He's been in a fight before. He's got more in cage experience. Yes. So, and he's also been under the lights, as you just mentioned, but uh, the UFC lights. But uh, I have to go with Kimura because not only is his last name Kimura, but he's a submission specialist. Yes. Though, though he has not won by Kimura. 
I want him to win yes, by Kimura. Or, or, or he has not won by Dustin either. Right, yeah, he needs to win by <laughs> one of those. I'm going to go with Chico. You can go with okay. Kimura. All right. And, and God help us, please let him win by Kimura. <laughs> I would love to see Mike Goldberg's head explode as he tried to wrap his mind around how to... That's the best <laughs> Kimura in UFC history by Kimura. I'd like... You know what? It doesn't matter who wins as long as either of them win by Kimura. It's true. Because if, if Dustin Kimura got Kimura, that would be the most ironical thing <laughs> since a, a modest proposal. Whatever. Let's move on. This is not a place for literary illusions. No, I don't understand. I know. It, to your defense, it is European, and we know that anything outside of the United <laughs> States, you're completely blind to. FX right. card. This first fight is <laughs> extremely unkind. If uh, the UFC is a great matchmaking organization, they did Isaac Valley Flag no favors whatsoever. He is 13-3-1, four-fight winning streak. He's a strike force guy coming into the UFC for the first time, and he is fighting the Thug Jitsu master, Eve Edwards, 42-18-1 on a one-fight winning streak. Ouch. On a, not only on a one-fight winning streak, a brutal KO of a, de- of a, of a decent fighter. Jeremy that, Stevens. So that's how the Thug Jitsu Master rolls, man. <laughs> I had him uh, losing that bout, no problem, and then he went ahead and knocked Jeremy Stevens cold. That's one of the more infamous Lucky Rob comments. I actually pre- predicted Stevens when he by uh, submission. I yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move on. Uh, I, I I think Valley Flag uh, should you know begin suing the UFC at this point. It's his, it's and it's only his second fight at lightweight. What is going to happen to his face? I got Eve Edwards. Yeah, I think everybody does. By triple the experience. Yeah. It's amazing. Anything else you want to say about that fight? Other than uh, the last rites for Isaac? Right, God watch over Isaac. Yes, if there is a God. If there what, is. What I say, what I say. <laughs> Can I just say something else? I, I have Twitter conversations with John Fitch, and he doesn't ever want to talk about MMA. He wants to talk about politics. So I have all these conversations with him about libertarian stuff because he's a, a rabid Ron Paul fan. And as a result, half of my Twitter followers are libertarians. <laughs> is, is he trying to exhaust you with his, with his politics? Is he trying to grind you out with his politics? Ah-ha-ha-ha. <laughs> 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 it took me a second, but now I'm with you. Yeah. I, I think I may tap due to exhaustion. No, don't tap. He, he wouldn't even know what to do. You're he such a know. hater. <laughs> Let's save that for the main card. Next fight, lightweight Jacob Volkman, 15-3 and three on a one-fight winning streak versus Bobby Green, 19-5 and five on a four-fight win streak. This is Bobby Green's first UFC fight. This will be Bobby Green's first UFC win. Ooh! Um, and I say that uh, because I do not like Jacob Volkman. Um, also... Bobby Green has an idea of what to do against a wrestler, whereas Jacob Volkman only knows how to wrestle, doesn't know what else to do. So, I have to agree with you, but me, I'm coming from this purely on principle. Jacob Volkman isn't funny, and I sincerely and desperately hope he doesn't get a post-win interview. Right. If... If he does get a post-fight interview, I'd like it to be actually with Goldberg. I'd like for once Goldberg to go in there, so that way they can make stupid jokes to each other. I would like to see Joe Rogan use his new black belt to strangle Jacob Volkman with the microphone cord. That'd be nice. That'd yes. be very nice. Can I can I say one thing about uh, about his opponent? Mr. Green, and this is something I found hilarious going through different uh, things, uh, you know, studying up on him. It says that he lost to probably your favorite fighter of all time, Tim Means. Um, it says he lost to him. He lost the lightweight uh, belt. I, I believe it was a lightweight belt. Junior welterweight, which is a, the in um, King of the Ring. It's a it's a weight class right between lightweight and, and welterweight. Right. Yeah, he lost that belt to Tim Means, and it says that he lost by method of retirement. What could that mean? Well. During the fight, Bobby Green turned 65, and the state of California <laughs> dictated he had to retire. So, sorry. That he just it. said, you know what, I, I'm done. And then he went of, on to fight six more fights. A bunch of old ladies with blue hair came in and said, sorry, the fight's over. This man has to retire. <laughs> I don't know what that means. 
I have no idea either, but I'd like to see Volkman go down. I, I know this about Volkman. Um, he, he lost once recently by, you know, Paul Sass. I'd like to know, I'd like to see him lose again and then just be out and out cut by Dana White. I, I know Dana doesn't like him. I don't know. He's got a pretty nice record in the UFC. I will say I like Bobby Green simply because he's a black man with the last name Green, and that makes me think of my favorite singer of all time, Al Green. Of all time? Of all time. So, Bobby, woo him with your dulcet <laughs> tones. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Jacob dulcet. Volkman, you're going down. <laughs> Next fight, welterweight Tyrone Woodley, 10-1, and one, coming off of a loss to Nate Marquardt, versus Jay Huron. 23 and 6 also coming off of a loss. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, Mitch Mitchell. Tyrone is the guy with the super annoying wife, isn't it? Woodley, I I can't recall. There's a wife uh, during, during of a, you mean of while a black he's wrestler that screams during his matches and you can hear her and it's not Rashad Evans. Mm, it could be. You, it could be him. I think it's him. Listen for the wife. Because if if it's the same guy I'm thinking of, then you'll hear her over the broadcast. Well, what was the name of the of the fighter of the UFC fighter who got cut after one loss and he he seemed like a legitimate um he was he was also a black wrestler. He seemed like a legitimate contender and he was cut after one loss. Do you recall that, who I'm talking about? Is that Harris? Yes. He coming off of the many the uh, Gerald the, Gerald Harris, that's right. Yeah. He it fought could the be Michael Fasau for, for in fact. Could be his wife. No, I think it's Tyrone Woodley. Listen for her. Okay. Who do you like in this fight? Well, um, you have two guys with uh, great wrestling backgrounds. However, um, Huron, when he does go up against another wrestler, he loses, generally. Um, if you look at his last two losses, it's against Ellenberger and Ben Askren, the most boring fighter ever. But um, you're looking at a guy who I think is going to get out-wrestled by Tyrone Woodley. He's got a lot of experience compared to Tyrone Woodley, but I think he gets out-wrestled. Yes. Um, this is actually Jay Huron's second stint in the UFC. He fought in UFC 48 one time, lost against GSP, and it was back you can't in the hold that against him. Well, I could, but it wouldn't be fair. Yeah. I mean, he did. He he has beaten Pat Healy. He also did beat Ellen Berger once, um, but I don't think his wrestling's going to hold up here in a second stint. I think so. Tyrone Woodley is far more athletic. His mm-hmm. his guys that he's beaten include Tariq Safadine, the last champion of Strike Force, uh, Paul Daly. Although you know, obviously Paul Daly's not known for his extensive wrestling background. Mm-hmm. I I'm going to tip my hat to Tyrone Woodley. I think he's far too athletic. His wrestling is better, and uh, quite frankly, I think his wife's urging <laughs> from the stands will carry him over the edge. How do you, the, uh, Woodley is a late replacement for Eric Silva. Do you think Eric Silva would have been a better fight? Uh, yes. I think Eric Silva is just as athletic but more dynamic on the feet, which probably think, would have been better for Huron, to be honest. But uh, Well, I think Eric Silva is da- like, disgustingly dangerous, and um, I think Huron would have been waking up after this fight. Oh, you do? Absolutely. I think Silva's like just... He's on another level, and I think John Fitch taught him a lesson to be a little bit respectful, and he watch out for Huron's uh, wrestling game. So yeah. I would have liked to have seen that, how, how Silva would have learned from his last fight. The last fight of the prelims, uh, lightweights, Glayson Tebow, 26-8 and eight on a one-fight winning streak. He beat Masaranduba uh, versus Evan Dunham, 13-3 and three coming off of a loss. Glayson is technically not a light, lightweight. Technically, I believe he's a cruiserweight. Cruiserweight. You like, you like what I did right? there? I do. Thank you. Do you yeah, he, do you know? Um, he Gleason... cut seventy five pounds for weight. 75. Goodness, goodness. I was and there. That's, I saw. You it. were there. That's mathematical. Yes, mathematical. That's science. You can't really argue with the science here. I I don't try. Um, his real name, Glayson Tebow, is first of all I can't pronounce any of it, but his middle name is Herculano, which I believe is a tip of the hat to Hercules. And for that reason, he's the future champion of every division. Can I attempt his name? Sure, absolutely. Apparently you're pretty good at it. So, Well, a lot of Brazilians listen to our show, and that's not, that's not bullshit. They actually do. Um, I believe his name is Yanigleson Herculano Alves. 
I have no that, idea where T-Bow comes from. That sounds real, and I think you did a great job. Oh, now I see where Glayson comes from. Yes, Yanny Glayson. It's right, okay. Well, thanks for putting that together for me. Yeah, T-Bow, I don't know. Do you think T-Bow is sort of the Brazilian translation of Debo? It could be. Or maybe he's the real Tebow. He's the real Tim Tebow. What do you think? Oh, do you think he's going to start praying in the ring? I think he's going to need to after he knocks out Evan Dunham. Pray for his soul. Pray for I think, everything. <laughs> I think Evan Dunham is going to lose. Do you I think by knockout? Do. Um, no, I don't. I don't think it'll be by knockout. Um, I, 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 honestly, I don't see how this how this fight will play out. I, I think if anything, it'll be a de- uh, decision in T. Bow's favor. Yeah, T. Bow. But you never know. This is one of those fights I think could go either way. But I'd say it's sixty forty T. Bow's direction. I'd say it's more than that. Um, you're looking at a guy in T. Bow. T. Bow. See now you've got <laughs> me. Now you. Now I don't know what to say. The the guys that he's lost to recently are Melvin Gillard, Jim Miller. And Khabib Nurmagomedov, the that dude, was very nice. The the dude that's running through the UFC right now. So yes. it's not like he's a pushover. And Evan Dunham was was once a guy who, you know, was threatening for the lightweight title before he got gypped by Sean Shirk. So I think what Glayson has been able to do, I think I think he'll I think he'll, I don't think he'll walk through him, but I think he'll win easily. Okay. I'll go with Glayson as well. The main card, UFC 156, the pay-per-view, starts off with flyweight Joseph Benavidez versus Ian McCall. This could be a headliner on an FX card or Fuel TV card, but it It leads off the pay-per-view. And ladies and gentlemen, it only gets better. (laughs) It absolutely could be. Uh, Joseph Benavidez is 6-3, coming off of a loss versus current champ Mighty Mouse. Ian McCall, eleven three and one, also coming off of a loss. Uh, sixteen and three, not six and three. Uh, six and three, I don't. That'd be silly. 11, that'd just be. No, Ian what? McCall is eleven three and one. No, no, no. You said Benavidez was six and three. Sixteen. Right, sixteen. Okay, where do we go from there? What do you think <laughs> about the fight? I believe that Uncle Creepy is one of. One of the fan favorite type of guys. Greatest nickname I, ever. If, and it fits him wonderfully. Yes. Um, there's a lot of power in Benavidez's hands. I like Benavidez in this fight. Benavidez has four knockouts, eight submissions. Power or no power, he's a finisher. Mm-hmm. Whereas Ian McCall, with fewer fights, has four knockouts, three submissions. You could actually argue that McCall's got more power. But I, I do agree we'll with you. Out. I think, first off, Ian McCall should be an extra in a gunfighter movie. His little mustache <laughs> that he's got going is beautiful. I love it. <laughs> let's get him in a Clint Eastwood film set in Arizona, and let's let's get it done today. <laughs> I've tapped my pencil just to make an emphasis like I'm a studio exec. <laughs> I think Joseph Benavides is going to win this. He's 28. Let's take a look at McCall. He's 28. There's no advantage there. But I do think Ian McCall is too up and down. I think he doesn't take his training as serious. I don't think he lives a fighter lifestyle. Um, He also has had drug problems, which you never know when it flares up. I think he's a bit more of a wild, loose cannon, where I think Joseph Benavidez is going to start rebuilding his resume for a title shot probably at the beginning of 2014. I don't don't even know if it'll take that long. I think... I think I'll be back in the mix before then. Um, I, I, I think you were also making the comparison uh, of age and things like that. It's also important to look at where they fight out of. Benavidez is coming out of Alpha Male, whereas McCall is coming out of Uyama. And do you know any <laughs> other fighters coming out of there? No. Isn't that Not, next to the Benihana on uh, Sunset be. Boulevard? It's no. like all you can eat, and then you go train jujitsu. Lovely. So. Uh, <laughs> I, I love to watch Uncle Creepy fight. I, I don't think he'll make it out of this fight. I don't. You think he'll be finished? Uh, yeah, I do. I think Benavidez finishes him. I'm going to give Benavidez a decision, but I don't okay. think he finishes him. Okay. And speaking of decisions, our next <laughs> fight 
Welterweights John Fitch, 24-4-1 with one no contest, coming off of a destruction of Eric Silva, versus Demi and Maya, 17-4, who has not lost as a welterweight. This is a badass matchup. This is a grappler's wet dream. <laughs> how good, how much has Demi and Maya's striking improved over the last few years? His striking has gotten better, yes, but I think he's actually gotten back to his grappling, which has made all the difference. Yeah, well, now that he's got a striking game to lean on a little bit, his it makes his dangerous grappling game scary. Very yes. scary. Um, but you have to admit, John Fitch looked pretty freaking awesome versus so, Eric Silva. So let's talk about John Fitch, since I know that's all you want to do. Let's. Uh, um, okay, so John Fitch is the kind of guy that I've liked since... I'm proud to be an American, <laughs> where at least I know I'm free. <laughs> since his beginning in the UFC. And then somewhere around, I don't know, the 25th decision, decision in a row <laughs> yes. of of just, I'm going to take you down and that's all I'm going to do. Um, I started to dislike him a little bit. Um, even though he's got he's one of those fighters who went to college, he has a degree, he's, he's an educated man. And he also has the eat, train, eat, train, eat, train, that's all you do. Um background where I guess he's he lived in his gym for some time. I mean you you've probably read three biographies on him. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about here. I will um, say this, he did get his uh Brazilian black belt, his BJJ black belt from nothing to black belt in four and a half years. That's pretty sick. That's pretty crazy. So I think that he, I I I'm pretty sure that the at least the UFC tried to feed this to me that he slept in the gym for an extended amount of time. Anyway, Lost like something fandom. like thirty six hours straight sleeping. <laughs> Lost fandom. I did not like him. And then what he came out and did to Eric Silva, pushing for that decision or pushing for that finish that he didn't get, but he was going for it. I am a full on John Fitch fan. When GSP and I've said this a couple of times, maybe only twice. This will be the second time I've said it on the show. When GSP came off of his victory over Carlos Condit, and he had a hematoma on the size of his head, the size of Leonard Garcia, <laughs> he said that Carlos Condit was a tough fight, but John Fitch was the toughest. Mm -hmm. That's all I gotta say. Throw down the microphone, walk off the stage. <laughs> well, do you recall John Fitch's face after that fight? Do you recall a lot of people's faces after they fight GSP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no shame in getting beaten by GSP. None at all. None at all. But when you get decisioned by the decision specialist, whoo, whoo. So, who do you think wins the fight? <laughs> I know you don't like me talking negatively about him. I like John Fitch. I like I think, John Fitch. I think this is going to be. Extremely, extremely interesting. This is going me, to be a chess match. What I have seen from Demi and Maya is I think I I think he's got adequate cardio, an average cardio for UFC. I'm interested to see if John Fitch can take him down and drown him before Maya can submit him. Let me say this, and you heard it, you heard it here first. Yes. John John Fitch by stoppage. Ooh. Clearly not on the ground. Uh anywhere. Anywhere. Uh submi even maybe submission. You never know. Um John Fitch by stoppage. John Fitch has only been submitted once, and that was his first fight way and back in 2002 versus Mike Pyle. Do you remember what he did first of all Mike Pyle? Do you remember what he did against Eric Silva, he was all but knocked out, or all but put to sleep and pulled himself out of that. He, what was he, in a rear naked choke? You don't and, choke out the Fitch. No, he had both, and he had all the hooks in, and Fitch was like, nah, not doing this, this isn't happening. So, uh, even though he's got the second most uh, decision wins in the UFC history, I think he's going to win by stoppage. But you have to agree, Demi and Maya is the best grappler in mixed martial arts, right? Absolutely. Dem Demi and Maya is disgusting. I mean, he's great. Yeah. So, and that's what makes this such a an unknown. 
Like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't. Can Can Fitch's grinding style, which plays right into Maya's strength, can he use his wrestling base to completely neutralize Demian's ground game? And obviously, he'd have to do that by just pressing Maya against the cage for long portions of the fight, just so Maya gasses. That's what and it's going to be. It's got to be, be an intelligent. Yeah, that'd be an intelligent uh, avenue to take. But I don't. I think Fitch is like. Look, I'm going balls to the wall now. I tried that. I won a lot in a row. Nobody cared. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, and I think it's great that he's adopted that. And I, th- I think it'll do great things for him. He's very, he's a very talented fighter. Um, and look, don't don't be surprised if Demi and Maya wins, at in the least. No. Um, but I, I'm th- I'm saying this with my heart right now. I want John Fitch to win. I do too. Maya has two losses to wrestlers, Nate Marquardt and Mark Munoz. I think Fitch, his MMA wrestling is better than both of theirs. Mm-hmm. I also want John Fitch to win, but this is one of those fights that I'll actually... There are very few MMA fights that I watch, and I'm nervous. Like, I'm about to go fight. This will be one of those fights. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I get nervous every time Dan Hardy's about to fight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I do know what to expect with our next fight. Oh, Heavyweight yes. Alistair Overeem, 36 and 11, and one no contest coming off of an eight fight win streak versus Bigfoot Antonio Silva, 17 and 4, off of a one fight winning streak, recently resuscitated after Cain Velasquez stopped his heart. <laughs> Let's, I want to break tradition here. And instead of, me, instead of me pretending that I'm intelligent when it comes to this, I want to ask you to break down this fight. How do you see it? I see Alistair Overeem taking his fist, left or right, and using it to beat the shit out of Antonio Silva. <laughs> is is it important that it's his fist? Could be his knee. Could be a low kick. Couldn't, uh, and, couldn't he and, just throw one of his ab muscles at Antonio Silva? He, he uh. could do a peck bounce during a clinch and knock Antonio <laughs> Silva out. You know how, how The Rock does? <laughs> The people's the people's peck flinch. Yes, yes. Um, there's absolutely no way Antonio Silva wins this fight. Both of these guys are juicers, by the way, so it's a fair contest, regardless. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Alistair Overeem is the best heavyweight right now alive. Um, I can't disagree with that. He just, you know, he's got a lot of fights under his belt. He he just really doesn't fight all that often. I know that sounds weird, but... He's been fighting since he was like seven years old. Right. But he... He didn't fight at all last year. You know, with the suspension and everything. Yes. He he fought Lesnar and Fabrizio in an embarrassing fight for the both of them. Yes. Um, In 2011... I don't, I don't know. He, I, for me, if you're billed as the greatest in the division, you need to fight more and you need to fight better competition. Let me make a case for Alistair Overeem. And I'm not a huge Alistair Overeem fan. I, I, I don't like juicers, and I kind of think he doesn't have much of a personality despite what his Enter the Ream or Return of the Ream videos try to make it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has an elite skill, and that's his, his kickboxing and I think his elite skill is better than any other heavyweight's elite skill, by far. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw JDS's boxing fall apart with Cain Velasquez's boxing pressure. I think Alistair Overeem, with triple the fights of either JDS or Cain, and the fact that he's a K1 champion, puts him on a whole nother level. Cain does not really use his wrestling. Alistair will have an extreme strength advantage because he will cut weight to get down to 265, assuming his body type hasn't dramatically changed when he's now off the sauce. <laughs> and he, Brock Lesnar said that when he felt Alistair's power, he'd never felt anything like that before. I think this guy is a freak of nature with or without synthetic drugs coursing through his veins. He, he really is. I mean, but what I just don't understand about him is you're going to deny it. All I'm denying of it. it. Yes, all of it. He's going to deny all of the accusations, but at 26 years old, 
at 26, when, when for me at least, I'm not bulking up a ridiculous amount, he's getting put down by guys like Chuck Liddell, uh, Lil Nog, and Shogun. At 26, he's fighting guys that are that small, and now he's the biggest guy in the division, uh, except for, you know, Tim Sylvia. So That's that not a good comparison. <laughs> <laughs> that just doesn't make sense. Um, that he at, at least how do you feel? Yes, about he's it? a you, juicer. He's a juicer. There's yeah, no yeah, question about it. He's a juicer. How do you feel about it? Would you be? Would you give him a little bit more leeway if he actually came out and said, "Yep, I'm doing that"? Or, I mean, he's been busted. Uh, he's fighting another juicer with Antonio Silva. I don't, personally, I don't really care because I kind of assume most of these guys are. Yeah, and that's what's a bummer, though, is, is that you get guys like this that are, and then all of a sudden everyone is. You know what here's, I mean? It, here's, here would be the bummer for me, is if you can take a fighter, then let's just say Cain Velasquez, and you can, I, I, I would, let, and let's say I know him personally, mm-hmm. or he takes blood tests every week on his own volition and publishes the results, and we know he's clean, and he fights a juicer and loses, that's a bummer. Right, but what I'm but saying is... But we don't is, know anyone's clean. Yeah, and I get what you're saying. It's just that there's that there's that cloud over every fighter because of fighters like this. Yes. So well, I mean that's the way it is. John Fitch is a great fighter. He doesn't have a beach body, but he could be using EPO. I mean that's that's just the, yeah. the nature of the sport. You just don't know. So many people have cheated and gotten caught uh, under the lightest uh, of scrutiny, and so you just have to assume that there's. A lot of people getting an unfair advantage. At this point, deer antler spray is a yes substance people are using. Yes. If you follow Apparently, the NFL. I, I, oh, I'm going to start drinking uh, Leota Machida's urine, you know, so that I can get that little <laughs> extra boost. This card, at least the main card, sort of has a theme, and that's beat the Brazilian. You've got Damian Maia, who we think will get beat by John Fitch. You've got Antonio Silva, who will be raped in a Dutch prison by Alistair Overeem. And then, of course, the next... The consecutive Brazilian that I emphatically believe is will get dominated is Little Nog, Antonio Rogério Nogueira, 20-5, one fight winning streak, versus the returning Rashad Evans, 17-2-1, coming off of a loss to John Jones. Do you think that Little Nog has a chance here? Little Nog, it feels like he has not fought since, like, paper was invented. Like, he hasn't fought in forever. Yes. Um I don't think he... I don't know why he even is still fighting. He has no chance. No. He he came in with a bang when he KO'd <sighs> Lewis Kane. And I think that was a bit of a fluky win. Because he has right. not looked anywhere close to that level since. No. I'm, I haven't been a fan of his... Um, I, I, how can you not like the Noguera brothers, right? But when he got the decision win over Jason Brills, I was furious. And yeah. then when he acted like he deserved it, it made me even angrier. Listen, Little Nog, my least favorite Nogara brother. Big Nog, I like him, but my favorite is Eggnog. I love that guy. He is just <laughs> brilliant. Thank you. Rashad Can- Evans, in his fight versus John Jones, I think clearly established himself as the second best light heavyweight. R- Rashad? Yeah, I think he's a level yeah. above Nogara. I... <laughs> I, I I don't know I, I wouldn't I'm not sure if I'd put him at number two in the in the division but he's definitely leaps and bounds above uh, Lil Nog but to put him at number two it means that he's got a legitimate chance of taking John Jones' belt. No one has a legitimate chance. The space the space between one and two I think is big. Okay, so let's let's I put him at number two minus Cormier. So with Cormier, who's your who are your top three or four or five light heavyweights starting with John Jones? With Cormier. Yes. Um, I'm going to go, obviously, John Jones, um, then probably Cormier, then Machida. I'm going to put Machida above Rashad, above sexy Rashad. <sighs> so what are we at, three? Um, That'd be four. If, you, if Rashad comes after Lyoto. No. Really? I'm going to put Hendo there. And Come then on Rashad. now. You're, now this is just crazy talk. You think you think Hindo can beat Rashad? You think Hindo can beat Gustafsson? Um, I do think Hindo can beat Gustafsson. 
I think Hendo would send Gustafsson crumpling like Stefan Struve. But the th- reason that I put Hendo above, at least Rashad Evans, is did you see the fight with Rashad and Tiago Silva? Yes. Tiago breathed on Rashad Evans, and he, his eyes got... Now, maybe he was breathing animal piss on him, but Rashad Evans didn't know what to do. Did you see the fight between Rashad Evans and Tito Ortiz? Did you see the fight between Phil Davis and, and Rashad Evans? Rashad Evans has been reborn. I don't know what he'll look like coming off of all of these injuries and layoff, but he really took it to a next level in the last 18 months. Seriously. He's, he's, he's good. And I, I wrote a really mean article about Rashad Evans' chin, so you don't have to kind of convince me that he's got a glass <laughs> jaw. For which I do people, recall that. People on the internet still aren't talking to me about. Um, I know. I remember that. Thank you. Check um, it out. Whatculture.com. I, I don't think it's any secret here that that Rashad wins, but no, I don't see him. In my opinion, though, I don't see him as the number two. He's a he's a fantastic fighter, but I don't see him as the number two. Does he finish Little Nog? He, yeah, he does. I think he does too. Well, that brings us then to the perhaps the greatest fight, at least from a pre-fight perspective the lead-up to the fight, the hype for the fight, perhaps in UFC history. Oh. Jose, Jose Aldo, 21-1 and one on a 14-fight winning streak. 14-fight winning streak. He is arguably the second or third pound-for-pound greatest fighter. Okay. I would put GSP ahead of him because I think GSP has fought bigger names the featherweights haven't had as much time to develop quality candidates for Aldo to really defeat. But he's got Mendez, Uriah, etc. Versus Frankie Edgar. Frankie Edgar is 15-3-1. Obviously, he's coming off of two losses in back-to-back title shots with uh, Bindo, ben, Henson, ben Henderson. Here's why I think Frankie Edgar is the greatest dance partner for Aldo. Because Frankie Edgar, I think, is legitimately a 140 fighter. I think he's between featherweight and bantamweight. His natural. Mm-hmm. His, I mean, if he were to cut weight like a wrestler would, I think he's right at 140. So I think Aldo will actually be bigger than Edgar. Now, 15-3-1, and three and one, and he was doing that against the deepest division, the lightweights. Gray Maynard, massive guy. Those were epic fights. He beat... BJ Penn, who had not been beaten like in you know since Roosevelt was president, <laughs> I think Edgar Aldo better than BJ Penn versus GSP. And honestly, I can't think of another fight that's got two guys that were ranked this high coming into it. I'm not going to disagree with you on that. It was definitely better than BJ Penn, uh, GSP. You're right, and those are you know you're you're talking about two different di- divisions. Uh, fighters yes. from different divisions, right? Because that's the only way for them to be in the top five pound for pound or top ten is they have well, what to be I, from different divisions. What I wanted, okay. What I wanted to ask you was, you said that Aldo, you have him as two or three on the pound for pound. I think he's. I think his resume is a bit better than Jones. Wow. His resume, sure. But Jones has the best year uh, as a champion ever. In the UFC. So, but what you're saying is, if Aldo was a 205er, you think he would beat John Jones? That's a really hard question. Right. Uh, you know, we can. You know, that's a fantasy debate at all. I just, I, I'm surprised by that because they're they're super super close. You're they're saying super, that you would put close. you would put GSP, and I'm hoping Anderson Silva above. Jose oh, Anderson Aldo. Silva. Anderson Silva is the king. Right. He's the greatest fighter of all time, in my opinion. Not of all time. The pound for pound right now. Yep. Uh, oh. But I think Aldo... Okay, I think Aldo is, is third, and if John Jones is equal, then they're, they're tied for third. How's that? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't get into the pound for pound thing at all. I, it doesn't really affect me, but when you do talk about it, it's, in, it's just interesting to me that you... That you I, I, yeah. I think John Jones's division is weak. I think it's one of the weakest divisions in the sport. He's fighting a lot of old guys. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, I'll definitely give you that. That's why I think Aldo. I, I give him a nudge. I give him the nudge to the third spot. And th- this isn't the first time that Aldo's 
defended his belt against a career lightweight. Uh, he he did take out Kenny Florian and not that close of a fight. I, I thought Florian did the best against him um, than most other fighters. But uh, let's not forget that uh, Aldo has also fought. Hominick, Gamburian, Faber, Brown, Swanson. He destroyed Jonathan Brookins, but <laughs> who hasn't? He's fought another <laughs> Noguera. <laughs> Probably no relation. Uh, this guy's a, this guy's a killer, man. He, I, no, he he absolutely no. I'm not taking anything away from him. Um, he, do you think he beats Frankie? Let's just put it out there. I. I think you look at what Hominick was able to do. Now, I, I think something was wrong with Aldo on that night. Like a bad weight cut or something? So, yeah, something. But you look at what Hominick was able to do. <sighs> Edgar is a high-paced fighter, knows how to get in, get out. The only real way that I see Aldo stopping Edgar is if he can put one of those fascinating leg kicks on him. Because yeah. with, with Edgar's jump-in, jump-out style, if he catches him... With one of those ripping leg kicks, he'll need Faber, about or, he'll need about eight to ten of them, I think. Yeah, I think, but I think if he catches him with one, just one, it's going to tell Edgar, "All right, I got to I got to come up with something else." Um, the way that Edgar po- pops in and puts his weight on that lead leg with a with a well timed leg kick, it'll it'll make Edgar change his mind. But I don't, I can't call this fight. I honestly can't. When they announced it, I thought Aldo's going to eat him. But I think Edgar is going to win. Mm. Because I think I think it takes a fight uh at least 3 rounds to get used to Edgar's style. And Aldo hasn't fought any jitterbugs like that. Mm. Secondly, I think Edgar's wrestling will be the best that Aldo's ever faced. I so agree. you mix you mix into this Edgar's pippity pop. I'm in. I'm out. I'm jabbing. I'm getting out. I'm staying busy, but not doing a lot of damage. That's confusing. That's hard. And then take into a fact that he will be able to take down Aldo. I think he scrapes a very close decision. I think they fight again right after, and I think that's when we'll see the real fight when Aldo has adjusted. <laughs> so you prepare. think Edgar Edgar gets in another? Rematch. I think, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what I think. That's. Ex- I mean, that, that's what happens every time. People have, you know, they they fight really close. Edgar has a ton of heart. His style is confusing. Doesn't feel like it's been resolved. They fight again, and it's resolved. Well, well, not so much with Henderson, but still. If you're going with strictly a pattern in in your in my mathematical way, uh, it would follow the pattern. So that yes. would make sense. Um. I again, I can't call it, but I I, I think your analysis is absolutely awesome. Um, uh, your your breakdown of the fight, Edgar certainly is the best wrestler that he, that that Aldo will face, and it is interesting to watch somebody go against a fighter like Frankie Edgar or or Dominic Cruz, where they're just like, what is that guy doing? But that's also, and I don't mean to run too far off topic. That's also why it's annoying to watch. Clay Guida, because he has one of those kinds of styles, but he's but not he doesn't, effective. But he doesn't throw any it. punches. No, yeah, he's not effective. He, he with just it, does but that Ed- for thirty seconds, and you're like, "What are you doing?" Right. And <laughs> Edgar's is able to revolution. hop in there. <laughs> Edgar's able to hop in there and land that jab, or, or what he did to uh, Gray Maynard was was awesome. We, but, we, t- we, we talked about this with another fighter on a previous show about the autopilot factor. When a guy gets hurt, what do they do? Uh, and it was on the Brazil show, if you remember. In fact, it may have been me and Tom that talked about it. Was it. You and, yeah, it was you and Tom. When Edgar gets clipped, he goes from his dominant cruise, bippity boppity style to a brawler. And he's good at that, too. The guy has serious, serious heart, a great chin. I just. If, if Aldo wins, I'll be happy. Don't get me wrong. But mm. I think Edgar is going to take the fight. Let me ask you this. Who are you rooting for? You're allowed to root. Well, in in Australia, that means something completely different. Oh, I'm Um, sorry. Rooting means humping. Okay. Who are you rooting for? Uh, uh, Well, (laughs) when I root, 
I like to think of Aldo. <laughs> You're rooting for John Fitch, huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. <laughs> uh, if this fight were in Brazil, it would be hands down Aldo because I want to see him run into the crowd again. But it's in You're Las right. Vegas. Uh, man, this is one of those fights that I think me as a fight fan overtake any sort of predisposition or prejudice I have for any. Pre- I just want to see this fight, and wh- yep. however, whoever wins, as long as it lives up to what it could be, the potential of what it could be, I'll, I think I'll be happy but disappointed at the same time because I don't, I really don't want to see either fighter lose. You know what I mean? But I want to see. Mm-hmm. It. I, I'd like to see either fighter embrace the glory of the moment. You know, that, is that weird to say? Yeah. No, I know what you mean. I I will be on the edge of my seat, the or probably standing, the entire fight, because um, you'll be that nervous. Kind of. For me, it was like when Condit fought Nick Diaz. It was just like, what you know, Condit employed that kind of new style where it's get in, get out, and you're. For me, it, I was just on the uh, standing the entire time, and that's how I think I'm going to be for this fight. But I'm able to tell you that I am rooting for Frankie Edgar. Um, if Aldo I, comes out and dominates, I'll start cheering for Edgar. That's, I mean, that's just how it'll be. Whoever comes out and starts to do well, I'll start wanting the other guy to win. So you, you want the underdog to win, whoever right. ends up being the underdog. I I can see that, yeah. I just, you know, I, I, I wasn't a huge Edgar fan until... Um, until I, his second fight with BJ Penn, then I was like, "Wow, this dude's legit." And then the split with Gray Maynard, yeah, that that put me even even more on Edgar's side. I wasn't so disappointed with the losses to Bendo. I wasn't super disappointed with them because uh, I like Bendo as well. But I, I I'm going to be rooting for Frankie Edgar. I don't know who will win, but I'll be I'll be pulling for him. What what would be the proper way to say that in Australia? Barrack. I'm barracking for him. Okay, see I'm that's barrack for him. That's why I'm in America. That's right. I I I was a bit ambivalent towards Frankie Edgar, but as soon as I found out he was dropping down to featherweight, I liked it because I don't mm-hmm. like. I, I hated seeing him fight guys that were so much bigger. Why? I don't. It just annoyed me. I don't know. Anno- it annoyed you because he had so much more speed, and he could do that bippity boppity style. And they, the the lightweights, just weren't quick enough to keep up with it. So I felt like he was stealing fights. Really? Like, yeah, no, I don't agree with that BJ at all. Like, particularly against Penn, I didn't like it. Could you could you say the same thing if if um, GSP goes up and fights uh, Anderson Silva, and he's getting in, getting out with the you know laying in a jab and jumping back? You think he if, would? If steal- GSP beats Anderson Silva, it'll be because of takedowns. He won't be doing this this style. Well, GSP has been known to fight like that. Not against uh, Silva, he won't. <laughs> I'll tell no, you that I mean, but how he fought against Jake Shields. If he were to fight like that against Silva, he's a lower, faster fighter jumping in and jumping out. I don't think Edgar did any damage to Penn. No, you're, I mean I agree with that. That's my but point. I think I think, I think he, he did the equivalent of a standing land prey. In in both pen fights, pretty much. I disagree. But I in think the second I think fight. the featherweights and the lighter divisions will be closer in speed. So a lot of what I don't like about Frankie Edgar will be a, irrelevant. So I'll get to I, sort of appreciate him more as a fighter rather than ruin watching that style. I would like to hear if, uh, listeners, I guess, opinion on your statement that you thought he was stealing fights because of his speed. Because him having the size, the sheer size disadvantage and you thinking he was stealing fights, that blows my mind. He wasn't I, doing any damage. That's I my ju- point. Just, he just, looked, like he just bounced and threw more jabs than Clay Guida and stole rounds that way. I guarantee you there will be people on the internet that believe what I say. That's And that's fine. I'm just interested. In, I didn't know that opinion even existed. So I'd like to hear what people have to say. And if you believe that Mitch... Mitchell is correct. Well, then keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> well, I think we've gone on extremely uh, in detail uh, on the prelims and the main car, more, much further than we intended to. So why don't we sign off here? Do you have any final thoughts, Mitchell? I'm bummed out that we didn't have a bet for this event, but uh, other last, than that, it's... <laughs> the last show was either a high point or low point of uh, the existence of the podcast. <laughs> we'll leave I'm, it at that. I'm thoroughly excited, though, for this this card. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll be probably bouncing around at least 24 hours before. I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll even be jazzed to watch the freaking weigh-in. 
That's how I'll be taking <laughs> notes on the way, and I guarantee it. Does he look like he's going to lose? Whatever. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm Robert Curtis, a.k.a. Lucky. This is the Getting Lucky Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. Join me and Mitchell as we come back next week to do our review of all of the action. Mitchell, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, people. All right. See you guys next time. Goodbye.